Is there even such a thing? Oh, oh. Can we switch up all the rules? And imagine a utopia. Darling, I'm just so fed up with these expectations. They keep weighing me down. My heart is begging me to get the hell out of my life. I wanna live inside the upside down. For a minute and pretend. Honey, I'm a perfect ten. Whoa, whoa. Honey, I'm a perfect ten. Whoa, whoa. And if I say it enough, it gets ingrained in my head. Expectations they keep weighing me down. My heart is begging me to get the hell out of my head. I'm gonna live inside the upside down for a minute and pretend. Honey, I'm a perfect ten. Whoa, honey, I'm a perfect ten. Whoa, and if I say it enough, it gets ingrained in my head. She told me it's not your fault, but you don't realize that I never want to watch the truth in your eyes. There's a light that makes me blush. I won't look back when you're around. I won't think twice when you're around. Don't hesitate to hold me back Cause I won't 
can feel it Somewhere inside haunting Like a drug I keep on wanting There's a love that fits so perfect It's hard to believe There's a reason I can feel my heart stop beating And the air gets tough just breathing I'm alone but I'm still feeling like someone's with me Time is unfair, cause I know you're out there somewhere, patient waiting on feeling like your grip might slip too soon, but I'm running, chasing speed and gunning, I'll be right there all of a sudden, I feel your heartbeat lead me straight to you.
Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the co uh, whoa, man, that's scuffed. <laughs> Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Central Michigan University Up versus You and Me Only. I will be your play-by-play -play caster for this evening, cats. And tonight, I have with me Six Riffin. How you doing tonight? Oh, I'm doing great. Coming straight out of the dusty closet here to cast a great game with you, cats. Uh, right now, I'm really excited to get into this game at Yumi only for the Central Michigan University, but unfortunately, Yumi only will not be playing Yumi this game. It was banned, first banned. Uh, Yumi been a pretty uh, high ban priority we've seen a lot recently. Just been such an overall uh, strong champion in 914. She has received a small buff, or not buff, rather nerf. Uh, her Q cooldown to get nerfed as well as that mana, and I believe there was a targeting change uh, to where to how she can target with her Q. I'm not exactly sure on it, so I'm not gonna go into the details because I don't know them. Uh, but the next two bands will be that Morgana and Braum taken away from on both sides. Yeah, definitely. I agree. They're not too familiar with the Yumi, but I guess we won't have to worry about it too much as it was banned. And clearly, um, well, I guess, um, you know, whether it was nerfed or buffed, uh, CMU clearly does not want to play against it as they did first, uh, so, uh, sorry, ban it against Yumi only. And then following that, uh, there's going to be a Morgana ban to follow up. Uh, and then an Akali, but you know, two support bands against Yumi, so they're looking to really punish that bot lane, or at least really try to get a better pick for them. They said, of course, can flex. Oh, yeah, no, that is true. Uh, honestly, have not seen Morgana on top, maybe because I'm, I'm in my young low elo games, but um, definitely have not seen Morgana on top at all, to be honest. Oh, yeah, my microphone uh, cut out there for a second. Sorry about that. But, yeah, I didn't oh. mean Morgana top meant uh, mid, of course. Okay, uh, just making sure I was about to say. <laughs> a little bit more uh, more, more common. Uh, we're not going to see that. That is going to be the Akali and Nautilus as our final two bands. As we do get into our next and first pick, and that will be oh, the Evelyn getting the picked Evelyn. up here for CMU. Uh, not the strongest jungler, and definitely not the jungler you'd like to see blind picked. Uh, but... It's going to happen anyways, and we're going to have to see how Drew is going to play it. On the opposite side, they do have the opportunity to counterpick, and that will be the Sejuani. Yeah. Very strong counterpick. Very strong just pick overall. And really, when you look at it, you have the tankiness, you have the CC, and there is so much of an opportunity to build a team composition around the Sejuani, or Sejuani enter that team composition. Yeah, no, absolutely right now. So, I mean, right now, honestly, for Yumi only, you know, already picking the Sejuani, it looking like being the Lulu uh, locked in. Uh, yep, and that is right now. So, definitely going to be very strong later on once they get to that team fighting phase right now. So, uh, it's going to be really uh, good for uh, Yumi trying to scale into that. But looking to see what CMU is going to counter with. Uh, looking like hovering over the Kai'Sa to try to get the initial bot lane out. Feeling confident with the Kai'Sa so far, but hasn't been locked in. Nothing's promised so far. So, you know, they do have the next two picks. So possibly could lock in, um, you know, the full bot lane, but see what they exactly want to do yet. They already have a knowledge of the support. So it is going to be Kai'Sa for CMU, but seeing what they're going to do, it may leave this, they might leave the support up for the second round pick. But looking like it's hovering uh, over the mid lane picks right now. As although actually his pick it, it is going over to Pike so far, Aurelia. Uh, really don't know what exactly they want to do. Um, but as, I feel like uh, locking in. Oh, well, I guess that is Aurelia. So that is probably going to be the mid. But also can be flex top for the side of CNU. Yeah, I, I definitely like the mid pick here. You don't want to go for that support spot just because you already see the support. It's not really a priority pick as much as your mid laner is going to be, and especially with that Aurelia that we're going to see locked in here. It's going to be for Huncho Gary. Could be for G Mario up in the top side, of course. Uh, could, of course, be that counter pick. Ooh, uh, Alar. Ooh. Yeah, so I mean, definitely Malzahar. Very, very, very likely going for that mid lane, but, you know, already, kind of like we said, uh, almost kind of that neutralizing uh, mid lane anyway so far, but I mean at least I've been on the receiving end of a Malzahar Aurelia. It's cer certainly, um, I, d I definitely say it, it's definitely um, almost a bit of a skill matchup in terms of Malzahar and Aurelia. At least when I played Malzahar, I was not that skilled <laughs> and ended up feeding to her. But just the fact that uh, she really does have a lot more of that mobility, so really hard to kind of at least lock her down pre six anyway. She can just kind of really just waltz all over you with the Q resets and everything. So you know if that does go mid lane, uh, you know Frosty Waffles is going to have to be really careful for you know the pre level six engage. Yeah, you do have that pre level six engage, but you can see the team composition that is being built by Yumi only is 
more or less prioritizing that crowd control and that crowd control is incredibly important you have that Malzahar with the ultimate of course the Sejuani with her ultimate as well uh, being able to lock someone up is so so big you have that Lula behind it now what you need right now is your damage dealers because you don't have you don't have damage right now you have a Malzahar and you have a Sejuani that's that's about it there's there's not much uh, backing in your damage department looking at the other side for CMU though you have your damage you need some more utility you need those tanks you need those engage tools you have the Evelyn who's going to be able to go behind and look for some assassinations uh, you have the Kaisa who's going to be able to just now put some generally decent damage I do like those two ADC fans in Sivir and Caitlyn taking away some strong things that can counter the Kaisa uh, not too many champions left open for the AD in the AD carry spot here for the side of Yumi only. Uh, Varus, uh, one champion that I could see being very good here. Uh, it looks like he is gonna hover over that Tristana. I actually, I run into Earthrider Evan really often in solo queue, and he's, he, I, you can see his Tristana, it kinda just goes 50-50. Okay. Um, he, he, he either completely pops off and hard carries, or will rocket jump into your team and die. <laughs> And the pull of Cody Sun. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I would say a Cody Sun because he's not going for an insect. He's just he's fair, just fair. going in. He's yeah. just going in. <laughs> he's going in. He's dedicated to his craft. He's dedicated to his art, and he's going in. But this composition gotcha. we're seeing at a CMU can just run a Tristana down. You need some more mobility than that W. But there's no real champions left open that could take that. We're gonna have to see the Tristana with a Lulu behind it. We could see it pop off though. Yeah, no, that is absolutely true. I mean, you did say it was 50-50. Unfortunately for me, I have not ran into Earth Rider at all in my in my low elo games. But you know, also one thing that we're kind of still looking for on the side of Yumi, it still has a top lane pick uh, left open. So I mean, you know, that's Cyan Alpha locked in for CMU, huh. and that's going to be a top lane left open for uh, the side of Yumi. So whether or not they want to go more of a carry oriented top lane. So. The genius here in CMU's pick is they can flex that Malfighter Cyan top lane. Absolutely. And that allows for damage mental not to counter pick. He has to pick into either a Malphite or Scion and look for the counter pick. It's going to be the Renekton, not the greatest into either of these. He can look to scale in that early game, but really as a tank top laner, you're not looking for kills. You're looking to sit back and CS. And I'd expect the Scion to go to the top lane, uh, leave that Malphite down the support spot. Um, and that looks like it is what they're hovering over. Very interesting picks, I'd like to say. And I'm really interesting interested to see how this is going to turn out for the side of cmu um you have this malphite support which hence can be strong but you're into the composition of tristana and lulu uh such a safe bottom lane you have that rocket jump you have the lulu polymorph on top of the wild growth there's so much protection for the tristana and lulu herself yeah, the big no, snowball I mean, potential for the side of cmu is if they can hit that level six power spike first yeah, no, for sure. CMU is with level six is absolutely ridiculous. With <laughs> the Zion Ultimate and Evelyn's, you know, very high impact ultimates from the side of CMU. So, you know, I'm definitely really expecting to see some early action coming out from CMU, especially if they're able to get the early lane advantage and, um, you know, get level six before their opponents. Yeah, most definitely. We're into a quick spectator delay. Let's take a look at each of these matchups. You have the Zion versus Renekton. Nothing. Nothing too big, nothing too spicy. You have the Renekton is going to kind of try and scale out that early and mid game. If he's able to get strong, it's huge for the side of Yumi only. And he is bringing that Ignite. So that's important to note. Still will be one teleport for each size as Frosty Waffles has brought that teleport as well. Moving over to that jungle spot, you do have the counter pick of the Sejuani into the Evelyn. Not a incredibly hard counter, but something that will keep you alive more or less up versus the Evelyn. So you don't have to be incredibly worried about some of those early invades. Or I mean, even later game invades, you're, you're Sejuani, you're tanky. Your job is not to look for kills. Your job is to help your team. Moving into the mid lane, you got the Aurelia up versus Malzahar. This is a very, very volatile matchup. It uh, could really go either way, but if it goes to Aurelia's way, I can see this game snowballing completely out of control. And lastly, we've got the Kai'Sa, we've got the Malphite, we've got the Tristana and Lulu. And man, I, I don't know what to think of this. How about you? Yeah, I mean, when I think of uh, Malphite Kai'Sa, the immediately combo I'm thinking is level 6, just the unstoppable force into the Kai'Sa ultimate, you know, because just two, I, I would argue, you know, very long range kind of, uh, or at least kind of like more or less long range kind of engages, you know, Malphite just kind of dashing in, and then Kai'Sa being almost immediately able to follow up, uh, you know, with like the, uh, with the Void Rush and everything, or sorry, with the Killer Instinct, um, you know, one thing I just do 
<laughs> have to um, you know worry about um, you know on the side of CMU going for a hard engage like that. But then just the little polymorph and then just the pile of growth makes it almost so hard. And along with the rocket jump at Chasada, it makes it so hard you almost have to kind of immediately one shot before you know you're able to get you either get polymorphed, uh, you know, trying to get wild growth or anything like that. So gonna be have to be a very kind of coordinated and even have may have to bring on some help for that in order to get that. Yeah, most definitely. We are going to take a quick break. When we're back, we'll be back with the beginning of this match, of course, between CMU and Yumi only. Don't go anywhere or do go somewhere. Get your snacks, get your popcorn, come on back, and we will be right back. Right back. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We've got CMU up versus Yumi only here in the Collegiate A Division. Going to have ourselves a heck of a match, and especially with these uh, these two team compositions. I, I'm really excited to see how this bottom lane goes. Specifically, you have a Kaid and GP on that Kaisa and Malphite. You know, yeah. that's that's not something you see every, th every day <laughs> down at the bottom lane. You know, you, you're you're out, you know, you're putting in the hard work, you're, you're back at the railroads, and... You, see, you look down and you see a Malphite. That's not something you see. Yeah, <laughs> definitely something a little bit out of the ordinary from the side of CMU, but definitely could be their path to victory. And like I said, I mean, if they're able to time their levels very well, you know, really able to get that engage before a thousand petals is able to have the wild growth available, or even, you know, be able to time it as soon, uh, you know, just as um, the Chasana uses the rocket jump, you know, there's almost no escape, or at least you're guaranteed a flash. Yeah, definitely, but we're not going to see any invades here. Both standard starts for both teams, and Jungler is going to be at those red buffs, so we could expect either a nice little vertical from each side. Not too sure if we'll see it, and if so, it's going to be a little bit more aggressive from Drew, but I really like to see it, and I'll take a second. Let's look at this Arcade Kaisa skin. Like, I I don't know about you, but I, I, just, I just don't like it. Not a fan? Not a fan of the splash or the uh, in game. Uh, okay, I, I like the splash. I got I like the splash, right, but I got you, I The got in game, you. like like the the graphic for the stacks, just it doesn't appease me. 
The hue's nice. I'll admit that. Like, some of the graphics are really nice, but the passive, it could have been done so much better. Anyways. Yeah, fair, <laughs> fair. <laughs> there's, there's my rant for the day, and I already can see he's taking a bit of damage, a bit of poke, and that's not what you want to do in a lane like this. You do have Evelyn coming on around. Oh, Level oh two, God. though. This could be a 2v3. And this You're is a lot going. of damage going down. GP well, still going to come in. through. The charm is there as well. Earth Rider Evan still on the run. Akai's going to flash oh. on for the jump. And there. Oh, There's a reset. Oh. Earth Rider Evan is going to continue to go. You know, that's a reset. reset. And that hey, is another. Double. That's a triple kill for the side of Earth Rider Evan. Actually, a double stolen away by Scumbag Thousand oh, Petals. Oh, my God, yeah. So <laughs> three early kills down to the bottom lane. Oh. A thousand Petals. That is so what you not want to happen from CMU. I understood their logic, you know. Are they trying to get ahead? Because, you know, you delay that level 6 and then you can go in for another kill, even at level 6, or at least a guaranteed anyway. But it just totally backfired as they just could not uh, burn anyone down. They were so close, but in the end, they just overstayed so hard. And as soon as you see that bottom lane hit level 2, and especially when it's Tristana and Lulu, Back off. I don't care if it's a 2v3. They are so, so strong. When they hit that level 2 and you're still down a level, you're not going to win 3v2. And, well, we saw it in action today. Still Flash and Ignite available for the bottom lane of Yumi only. And already they're starting to run away with this one. BF Sword on your first back, man. That's got to hurt. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Bottom lane is not going to be looking good for CMU at the moment right now. But looks like there might be a scuffle in the jungle, but actually decided to let him pass. Although, he might be getting uh, collapsed here. Yeah, Damage Pencil getting collapsed on here. That is the charm going to come through. Flash is there as well. And that's just going to be a burn of summoner spells there for Damage Pencil. You can have that regank with Drew. He does have a nice little ward down in the river. So, important to note that. But should be yeah. fine for the time being. And Drew trying to keep the tempo up. And going mid here as well could have ourselves a 2v2 in the mid lane. Yeah, no, very possible. You know, like I said, well, actually, never mind. Already action again in the mid lane. Yeah, 2v2 in the mid lane. Frosty Waffles is going to blow that flash. Drew gets a nice charm. Teleport is available. I don't know why I said that. Drew oh, taking a lot of damage. Oh, he's going to oh, go down the turnaround from Frosty Waffles. Down to the bottom lane as well. Earth Rider Evan with that red buff. He's finding one. Going to jump on forward. The GP is going to have to blow resets. that flash. One more auto attack. The red buff burn. Yeah, the tick the way, and the jump. Earth Rider Evan escapes. And another two kills down to the ADC. And Earth Rider Evan. Oh my god, Yumi is Yumi only is outplaying and just playing so well on offense and defense. They're absorbing so much of CMU's efforts to try to kill them early. And in return, you know, even in the bot lane, Earth Rider and Thousand Petals are doing such a great job of pushing the early advantage they got from the early three kills. Yeah, absolutely insane. And actually what I was gonna say well before that fight happened in the mid lane, you know, uh, the one gank that Drew had up top lane against uh, Damage Mental, you know, I thought that was the right direction CMU was going, you know, you already got failed in the bot lane. So I think next direction would be to go, uh, you know, for that top lane with the Renekton that has uh, Ignite. So it's like if you're able to either kill him or even force him out of lane, he doesn't have a TP to go back and at least try to get your sign ahead. Yeah, I mean, you can try and get the sign ahead, but he's not your carry in the long run. He's only your tank, and when Netristana is already getting incredibly fed, 4-0 in the right now, has the BF Sword, has the pickaxe, she will do nothing but snowball out of control. And especially with the Lulu behind her, the rest of the team that's built for that composition, built to get that Tristana ahead, that, this is just a disaster so far for CMU, needing to do something different, and... Here comes Djox up under the Scion. No flash available for him. He's going to be on the run. The stun comes through. Yeah, oh, G Mario, I'm won. sorry. You've got nowhere to go. The Ignite going to go down. Completely useless. But Damage Mental going to secure that. And that's a kill over to Renekton. And Yumi only still continuing to run away. Guys, well, you know, at least that's a step in the right direction for CM. Or, or sorry. <laughs> Never mind. That, that, that wrong team. <laughs> yeah, no, I guess. Yeah, Yumi. Um, you know, Damage Mental, like I said, uh, you know, wasn't able to burn that flash off of the first engage, but I mean, just, you know, good gang from Djox is just really able to get him with the such Lani, the perma stuns, and just in general, was able to get a nice good follow-up with that engage. And yeah, as you can see right now, just by movement, even um, in the enemy jungle so far, Yumi is just really just dominating that. Now, I do like what Drew has done. He's gone over to the dragon and secured it. He knew, knew Djox was up in the top side and his mid laner had had priority. So was able to secure that dragon for more or less free. You need to be able to cut your losses at this point, and that's exactly what he's doing. Um, at the moment, you know, he's down two levels. That is something you never really want to be in the jungle, incredibly far behind in a matchup that goes just about even. Um, but, at, but at the same time, 
he's not in a horrible state. Hold up, though. Reganking oh, up top man. lane. G Mario, he's got the ultimate, but he has nowhere to go, and down he goes again. Yeah, no, for sure. You know what? Oh, yeah, yeah. For sure, uh, you know, damage mental oh, this for Nectar Pick. It's really just great and empty them, and, you know, especially their bottom lane just doing so well. And, you know, at least, you know, Frosty Waffles, at least, it, it, actually, well, being ahead in CS anyway, uh, but being relatively even anyway, uh, you know, Detox was pretty much has a clear target, at least where to go anyway. You know, it's okay. Bot lane's fine. They're already good. All right, well, now Zahar is, you know, he's just fine being Mal Zahar. And, you know, well, you know, I can at least help out, you know, my Nectar on top lane. And it's showing off, like, the 2-0. Drew is back down in the bottom lane trying to make something happen, but I mean they they won the level two at, in a three v two without you know everybody was zero zero zero. Now he's four zero on one. Don't take this fight. Ignore bottom lane. Give that tower. Um, you need to stay away from the bottom lane of Yumi only as much as you possibly can. Make plays on opposite sides of the map. Get that Aurelia fed. She's 1-0 right now. She's got the Sheen. She can work towards that Trinity Force. Right now, you need to focus on snowballing other lanes. Stay away from bottom lane. Yeah, definitely. If you are CMU, bottom lane is not the place to be right now. And, you know, while they do have a lot of good vision up around there and whatnot... But, I mean, yeah, they definitely need me to start making plays on the top side of the map and everywhere, you know, especially with Rift Herald going to be coming up pretty soon right now. But Yumi only is already ahead of the game, and they already got wards already in the enemy jungle around the river, and they have uh, allies in control right now of the river. Rift Herald coming up flashless and ultless is G Mario, and he's got nowhere to go. Just falling down with no help, and out of position once again, he goes down, and Djox is just hovering this top side. And this is the advantage you get. When your bot lane gets far ahead you don't have to do a thing you can sit there and wait all day and just have your bot lane stay oh ahead but God. drew's looking for this i don't know if he wins this honestly earth fighter haven't taken a lot of damage already wait, turning around the damage, damage comes he through does so much you can damage. see it drew goes down a thousand petals already jumping right back on oh. in gp just not level six does not have that ultimate does not have that unstoppable force and cannot do a thing and another kill heading on over the AD you know, I, I'm not sure if my eyes deceived me or if he just got deleted that fast, but it just seemed like the bot lane from CMU didn't even try and help uh, his uh, buddy out, Drew, to try to at least take that down because, you know, got maybe not to have help before he's got wild growth and, oh, let's not play in top lane. Honestly, just poor G Mario. That's, that's a rough time. You know, yeah. I swapped top lane for about a month for my school. Uh, it looked exactly like that. <laughs> you know, you, you just repeatedly get gank top lane, you get dove, you got nothing else to do, and it's it's really just a stem of a problem on the other side of the map. Uh, your it's real jungler, sad boy, yeah, your jungler can just spend so much time up top side because he isn't needed bottom side. He isn't needed mid. That Malzahar can stay alive. The bottom lane, of course, can do whatever they want. Honestly, you know, they're probably gonna head themselves top side. Dragon not gonna be up for another minute. Um, actually, it looks like they will be going bottom side uh, before. Going to be waiting for that dragon. Uh, but I would have liked to see them head top side, shove out a wave, and reset. But not going to do that. Looking for a gank Man. mid here. The ultimate is available for Frosty Waffles. He's going to oh, turn it, it on around. The damage coming through on the Drew. He's going incredible. Oh, yeah, the the visions. has the Malefic Visions oh. ticking on down. Not going to matter, though. As the kill finally comes on through, and this is what I talked about, Drew needs to do some damage. Oh, the side. Earthfighter Evans chasing him down. There's the flash. There's the bomb. There's the no, reset. That's not There's what you want. Crit. Nice ultimate there as well from Thousand Petals. He's gonna steal himself another one. <laughs> and Holy take another smokes. kill for himself. Damage mental, you're you're taking a tower shot there. But I mean this is incredible by the side of Yumi only. Yeah, no, they are just absolutely accelerating this game. You know, literally almost everyone having just deathless scores. You know, I guess Mal's are only really having the two kill the two deaths on the team so far. But you know, everyone just doing such a great job. Of you know, following up with these engages and playing off Earth Fighter Evan, but he, oh, actually, this, a thousand petals. That's that's just not what you want to see. Try to look for that ultimate, but it's not gonna matter. The ultimates are available. Thousand petals has the ultimate, as does Earth Fighter Evan. You've got D Jocks over the wall to help on out. I liked the attempt. You had to do something, but in the end, not gonna work out. Nice assassination though. But Earth Fighter Evan might be able to chase him on down, looking forward. But he might be in a sticky situation using that ultimate to try and escape. You've Ooh. got three people around him, and that is amazing amount of shutdown gold. Yeah, absolutely great from the side of CMU to find that fight and see the overcommit from Yumi only, and especially pick up that valuable. Oh wait, there's more. 
teleport is coming through. The charms there, Frosty Waffles. Yeah, you got nothing to do. Malefic Vision's gonna tick on down, but Akai should be able to stay alive. Infernal Dragon should be the next priority here. Yeah, you do have Djox still with that smite. We'll have to see if he's gonna go for a steal. Yeah, I mean, I guess I was talking about overstaying on the side of Yumi only, but I mean, just think about this right now. I mean, uh, you know, well, actually, I like this second dragon. Uh, but anyway, but you're talking about overstaying, it's not Yumi only. Definitely really taking advantage of that greed and, you know, playing really well, at least around your territory anyway, to pick up those skills, especially that valuable pickup gold on the side of Justana. I, 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 did, I did forget to see uh, who it actually went to, but uh, did you did you manage to catch? I believe it did go over to Avelia, which is actually nice. one of the biggest. Yeah, that's absolutely what I want to see right now, because definitely she stays to me standing out as definitely the one who can try to bring this game back for Central Michigan University. Um, so definitely good pickup from the side of uh, CMU, but definitely going to need to keep it up if they want to uh, keep up base here. Still a long road ahead of them. If they want to have any chance in this game, almost 10,000 golds behind right now. And, you know, you're down three towers to one. The towers have all been going over to Tristana as well. It's not what you want to see. Over to this Herald, though, and that's another objective off the table. Yumi only oh, picking man. it up and going to continue to snowball and keep that gas pedal down. Yeah, definitely. I mean, if it's one that, you know, you have that one minor setback you know, uh, for Yumi, if you're Yumi anyway. But, you know, I mean, I think you feel really pretty confident right now. Almost like 14 minutes in the game, you're up about 10k gold right now. So you're going to say, all right, minor setback. Let's just not do that again and not uh, try to have uh, S get caught out and not get a... Uh, uh, stay too long. Now, what would you think Yumi only needs to do to get back into this one? You mean uh, CMU? Or, yeah, CMU. See, uh, yeah, Yumi only totally needs to get back into this one. Yeah, you're good. Well, if anything right now, it is not going to be a 5 on 5. Because, you know, with that Tristana damage, you are not going to win any sort of thing as he's uh, her uh, taking out those crits and those ults and whatnot. You need to find those isolated engages and really pick, um, you know, pick Yumi off one by one, or at least try to pick out in small skirmishes that you can win for sure, and utilize a lot of those strong CCs like the Charm, like the Scion knockups, uh, like the um, like the oh, uh, no. Aurelia stun and whatnot, to try and grab those uh, CC. But it looks like that's going to be the opposite. Yeah, I mean, they, they you're looking for the engage, but it's not going to matter. Going down once again, you've got damage mental coming on. You should be able to find the stun. Indeed, he will right into it, Kai. He's going to use ultimate to try and escape, but the... Wild Grove gonna get the knockup. Not gonna matter here. Rift Herald spawns on in, and you've got Yumi only still running it down the opposite side of the map. Look at Visions as well as Ultimate coming through there as well, and another kill heading on over to the side of Yumi only. Yeah. So I mean, like I was saying, you know, I mean, it's like yeah. I say, you know, you have to find these engages, but it was so hard for CMU to do that when you can obviously just see the ward line just already seeping into the side of the jungle of CMU. So, you know, it's really how you're going to make all these, um, you know, cross-map movements when your movements are being tracked by the side of Yumi, and they can safely uh, ward any kind of engage that you try to do. Yeah, and, you know, we really talked about Earthrider Evan being a 50-50 player at the beginning of this, and, well, you got heads this time. You, you got, got the heads. side you really wanted, and... And he's 8, 1, and 4. Got that Infinity Edge and already looking for another fight. Drew going incredibly low. The stun's going to connect. He's going to try and stay alive. He's going to get shut down. Four or five people are around. Nice W there for Makai to try and find that one. And maybe trying to look for the range gate. You have Damage Mental. You have Frosty Waffles coming up on the opposite side as well. No ultimates for either one of them. And Earthfighter Evan is down. You need to be careful. No ultimates, though, for the other side as well. The huge uh -oh. engage. Akai, it might go down. Good this vision's going to tick on down. Not going to matter if the stun's there to keep him alive, but now a flashless Kaisa. Nice. That was actually a, you know, despite losing one, you still uh, are able to get yet another shutdown on Earthrider Evan, giving that gold over now to your Kaisa, which, I mean, not horrible, but uh, also uh, Hunter Gary on the Irelia could have used it too. But regardless, still getting another good pick. And, you know, like I said, even though you don't necessarily have that vision, you know, Despite Drew being two and six, he's actually doing a good job of always keeping Yumi on their toes, just with the invisibility or at least the camouflage you have on um, the Evelyn passive and whatnot. So I mean, it's really good always for him to be lurking around, always trying to make them think. All right, be like, where is she? Because you know, even though sure you can melt her in three hits, she does have the safety of her ultimate. You know, to kind of at least try to uh, keep her, uh, you know, away at least, you know, or at least uh, distract enough time for your teammates to follow up. Most definitely. Dragon, though, going to be spawning here shortly, and it will be that dreaded third Infernal. And 
Well, if you're looking for a dragon to pick, this is definitely the one you want. G Peach, though, gonna take the damage. Gonna get slowed up and nowhere left to go. He's gonna go down. And if they want to fight this one, it'll be a 4v5. Really, this is what you need. This is what you need. This is one of your saving graces if you're CMU. Is this dragon you have two of the infernals already if you can find that third and get that damage boost that is huge that's what you needed i don't want to say it matches you know the nine two and five but here it comes the steel trying to come in oh, it's it's it. It. <laughs> Ooh, drew finds it. Said it and that's what you needed yep you said it and they got it amazing <laughs> steal from drew on cmu he just walks in there with the invisibility flashes in and is able to get the smite insane incredible but it may not matter as yumi is undeterred and will just go for this bot lane uh tier two anyway or sorry, yeah. tier one. i mean it tier sucks two, to go down a triple and fro but it also sucks to be down twelve thousand gold <laughs> you know it, yep. you're, you're down 12k gold the tristana sent to in five you have a composition that's built beautifully around it to enable that tristana it's rough. There's not much you can really do. You have G Mario, and he's trying to clear out this way. Finds a good knockup, but no extra damage. Ooh. Huge ultimate. It's going to find four. Earth Rider Evans going to have to jump away. The damage going down on Frosty Waffles. Not going to find that stun. Drew's going to get one under 1,000 pedals, and they're going to find damage mental on the backside. The slow is there. G Mario wants it. He's going to try and chase him down. Not going to add that queue up just yet. Does find the slow into Frosty Waffles. Still trying to find him. You've got Drew on the backside. You've got Honcho Gary. He's going to flash forward. Look for that ultimate. Drew Earth Rider Evans uh, might try and turn this one around. Will he indeed not going to find that last auto attack and detox should be the next to go down as well frosty waffle still on the run but what a beautiful fight the flash the ignite g peach <laughs> double <laughs> kill for him but man that is the fight you wanted incredible that is the first uh, definitely definitely just good like team-wide fight from um, the side of CMU, you know, they're sieging down that inhibitor, that bot lane inhibitor turret, and, you know, they just seem so strong with the Justana and everything, but they're able to finally engage G Peach with the uh, incredible unstoppable force, knocking out four members, and really forcing Yumi to scatter. Forcing them to scatter indeed, and, you know, you're holding on, and you're holding on for your life. There was a 12,000 gold lead previously before that fight, now it's only 9,000. Get a little bit more gold on your carries. That Aurelia has that Trinity Force now. Your Kaisa is at that two item power spike. Not going for that Mara Mana build this game, uh, uh, this time around. And I I can respect it. Uh, I personally hate the build. Uh, but in the sense of, is it good? Wait, wait, okay. You're, you're standing on a pink, you're backing on a pink horn. <laughs> Bruh. He was too busy looking at shops. <laughs> definitely looking at shop on that one but g mario uh -oh. might be the one caught out here and indeed he is and that's that's kind of been this entire game for this top laner yeah definitely going 0 7 right now but you know the thing that i did say about you know in the beginning and when we're looking at this team and champ select is that you know their whole entire team just says engage you know so even when you're behind they have such high impact ultimates that they're really able to just kind of make those kind of gameplay moments and they're not gonna sit back and uh kind of just like take it yeah, and you do have take take a look at your mini map and you do have drew on that long flank you need to be careful that that pink ward doesn't spot him out not gonna find yourself an even fight just yet as it really is down the bottom side as is damage mental teleport is available for this ion and he should be able to match bottom lane instead but they're gonna look to crack this inhibitor for the second time around you know and yeah, when this inhibitor first went down i honestly thought we were gonna see the shortest oh, here's match the engage. here's the engage from g mario and <laughs> once again going in a bit too far they're going so deep onto the kaisa or onto the tristana rather all the damage gonna come through tristana does go oh. down they're kiting away on the choice of pedal he finds another that's another what? going over aurelia's gonna stay that's alive insane. and this is the turn this is what you need if you are cmu and they stay alive and they stay in this match that is i i saw that engage i saw the cyan also miss i saw drew getting cc'd and I just said, okay, this engage failed. But I just see, uh, I just see the Kaiza uh, going in with that killer instinct and just taking out that bot lane. And then obviously the front line collapses as a result. I don't even understand how they're doing this right now. Now, Frosty Waffles is here to try and stop this Baron. They're going to try and turn it on him. The damage is going to come through. He's no extra next. abilities. He goes down. Teleport has come on in. You have Earthrider Edmund and a thousand pedals on the way back. Are they going to be able to arrive in time? I don't think so. Baron will go down and it will be picked up by CMU.
we have a game. CMU just said we are not backing down at all. You can have, you know, your Fed Tristana, but we have engaged. Oh man, but I was just about to say that, you know, the past couple, you know, while uh, uh, CMU has had some great engages, they weren't able to really get anything off of those because either, uh, you know, they'd only have like two members left or, you know, the members would be like two weak, uh, you know, they had to have back in order to uh, really do anything. So it's like, you know, you got the fight, great, but now we're still getting uh, pushed in. So, you know, that was the fight they needed. They were able to still have four alive and then able to take a Baron. Able to pick up that Baron indeed. Need to be careful though. That stun not going to connect on Shogari. Almost finding that one. Drew on the opposite side. So need to be careful. Nice use Ooh. of the ultimate to dodge away from that Icial Prison. Glacial Prison, rather. What will not be ultless now. Both those supports ultless. I don't know if you really want to be fighting over this mound drag. Wait. You have the Baron. Use it sides. to your advantage. Look at the damage coming through from the Renekton on the backside. Oh, he gets a you. lot, but he'll be able to stay alive. Aurelia coming on the backside. Akai going to eat that ultimate on the backside as well. Thousand Petals and Earth Rider Evan still alive. They're going to stay alive for the time being. Putting the damage out. Drew the next to go down. You've got Huncho Gary on the backside. Earth trying to do what he can. Gene Mario still going back in. And when that Tristana stays alive, so do the hopes and dreams of Yumi only. Yep, and we just saw right there, you know, if CMU is not able to really coordinate that engage or even just d delete Earthrider Evan, that damage is just absolutely horrid. You cannot really take a fight if you're not able to get uh, the Shasana in the first place. At that point, I think they were a little kind of in too deep at that point, you know. Uh, a Scion really trying to wait his way, trying to do the back line, attempting to flank as much as they can. But, you know, he just really got caught up and then the rest of the engage kind of got scuffled from there. Yeah, but scuffled, you, you did have Damage Mental able to do a lot of damage as well. Uh, he's able to basically distract everyone for the time being. You got Earthrider Evan going in really deep. Drew's able to finally clean up Thousand Petal and get him out of the fight. And that's really big to get rid of the Lulu. The Unstoppable Force not available for G Peach just yet. You've got Drew coming in on the backside. Need to be careful. Earthrider Evan running low, but Drew does not have that ultimate. Evelyn is ultless. Silent's going to be there and connect on a Honcho. Gary Baron only available for the Aurelia right now. Drew going to get spotted out and have that vision. And this pink ward is going to get cleared. They're going to reset. Head over to this mountain drake. Yeah, there's going so back and forth at this moment. You know, at the beginning, of course, we always saw, you know, they were so dominant, just obviously in the picks. And then, uh, you know, Earthfire Evan being so powerful. But I think Yumi only is now really respecting their engage and not, you know, really hard committing, you know, to anything too much. Which I guess, you know, it has its ups and downs to it right now. Currently, the downs being that, you know, you're not really able to close out this game, which you had a firm grasp on, uh, grasp on in the early part. And now you have an opponent who has three uh, L has three uh, infernal drakes, a mountain drake, already uh, took Baron from you in that last uh, uh, in a couple fights ago. So right now, I mean, if you're Yumi only, you really have to think about how you're gonna start closing this. Yeah, you should have closed this a little while ago. Honestly, as soon as I saw that inhibitor go down for the first time, I thought this might be the quickest match we've ever had on stream. Turns out I was wrong. Even then, uh, it feels like ages ago that that inhibitor went down. We're still only 25 minutes in. That inhibitor dropped at 14 minutes. This game, it feels long, but it's been short. Yeah. No, for sure. Uh, definitely it's still a short game in India. It's only 25 minutes. I guess, you know, we're saying long of a kind, maybe kind of European standards or something like that. <laughs> but... Certainly, I mean, it seems certainly like it should have been a short way just of how kind of accelerated uh, the game was due to the fact that, you know, Earthrider Evan was just really able to pop off on this Tristana. But, you know, definitely real credit I have to give is to Drew right now. Like I said before, you know, really able to find those kind of like backline um, kind of like assassinations with the Evelyn, even if he was kind of lacking a bit in the early game. Um, so right now, I mean, really just trying to do what you can. They're really just trying to keep this game prolonged and pick the hairs. But right now, there's a fight going in the bot lane. Gonna look for the pick there. It's gonna be a big engage on Earthrider Evan. He's gonna get knocked up. He does have that Guardian Ooh. Angel and gonna be kiting it out. Beautiful flash, keep him away for the time being. The knockup not gonna connect either. That's a double kill though He's for the Kaiser on the backside. Keep your eyes on a Cade and Earthrider Evan. It's gonna be a battle. The AD carries. Who can do He's more? And I think it's gonna be Earthrider Evan. He's gonna jump in. He's got the Guardian Angel dodging away from the knockup. G Mario gonna have to flash away to keep himself alive, but no longer will he live. And Earthrider Evan will come out on top of this for the time being. It's still gonna be a 3v2. Drew alive, ult list, and as well as a kind still need to keep your eyes that guardian angel is up, up. Drew, thousand petals needs to be careful 
Drew not going to find anything there, and just the wave clear going to come out should be an inhibitor over to the side of Yumi only. Oh, man, wait, but Drew is still lurking around in the back. He knows he's here. Trying to turn around. He finds oh. damage mental. Drew only going to get one there. The bomb will connect. It'll be a one for one. Not too sure if it's entirely worth. Your jungler is now down with Baron spotting at 35 seconds for a top laner. I don't know about that one. Yeah, no, I mean, I can't tell. I mean, maybe, um, you know, maybe Drew's intention was to uh, try to and get, um, you know, as many members as I can to try and maybe dissuade a Baron. Because especially if her fire Evans out of the picture in the next like 40 seconds during that Baron, then it's like that's gonna be a pretty uh, contestable fight for CMU. But unfortunately, was only able to get the top lane. And, uh, you know, Yumi only still has a very strong Baron fight here, even if it is uh, 45 for the moment. Oh, oh my god, Akai. That man has the biggest cojones I've ever seen in my life. He just eaten to a Sejuani that had ultimate. He's I've, just, he, he, he just testing it. He's trying to, trying to blow the ultimate. <laughs> I've never seen something so ballsy in my life. <laughs> yeah, a uh, slight way to put it, but he he stays alive. Uh, Djok doesn't turn around, throw up an ultimate instantly. The flash is available for him, but opting not to use it there and gonna use oh, it on top like of the G Mario instead. One ultimate use and trying to turn around, trying to do a little bit of counter damage. Uh, maybe throw up He's some CC alone. and get someone else, but you're not really able to do anything. G Mario goes down, and it'll be a four v five for this next fight. You've got supers crashing in the bottom lane. Uh, still a little ways away, but you need to force the engage now if you're the side of CMU. You don't have time to wait. Damage Mental almost eaten up that engage, but not going to find it there. The side of CMU should, or rather, Yumi only either going to go towards oh mid, and they're going to look for this re-engage, not going to find anything, go top side instead. Be safe. Don't go for the Baron. Play for the safe play. For sure. But I mean, as we're saying, I mean... If they're able to just let G, uh, the Scion come up and whatnot, I mean, this is exactly honestly what I might be, she shouldn't be doing as Yumi only. You had your uh, mid lane and your bot lane pushing up, and you see these supers arriving. If they were started Baron, you had to basically, oh, well, here's the engage. There's the engage, doesn't connect onto anyone. The ultimate there as well. Fucked Waffle's gonna get the engage. Earthrider does find one onto the back line as well. Hancho Gary's on the run, but he's got nowhere to go. The stun is up. Earthrider Evan is deep. He's gonna jump in and look for another G. Mario stunned up with nowhere to go. And this looks like it could be the end. Akai, the only man standing. He goes golden, but with nowhere to go. Actually, <laughs> Earth Fighter Evan gonna save him, but look at the supers. Look at the minions. Look at the Nexus. The HP is gonna go low, and Damage Mental looking to pad that KDA, but nothing else to come through. But in a 29 minute slugfest is a way to put it back and forth between these two teams. They're able to end it, and Earth Rider Evan ending 18 4 in 12. Yeah, definitely impressive. You know, I was just about to say, you know, it almost just seemed like the game was going to go longer because it just seemed like it was going to be in their stagnant fight in the base and whatnot. You know, they were pushing in and that it's like, you know, their fear, fear of engage was going up. But, you know, they decided, you know, they basically just took advantage of the failed um, engage, the Scion, or sorry, not Scion, the Malphite engage, and they just went all out from there. Because I was about to say, you know, if they were just standing around again, they should have just went for Baron. They had the lanes pushing in, and they could have just basically uh, forced Yumi to choose. But poor execution from CMU and uh, good punish from Yumi only will close out that game in roughly 30, 29, 29 minutes. I mean, you could have given them quick props for surviving for that long. And, you know, at 14 minutes, Absolutely. We, we didn't expect it to go out to a 29-minute game. But take a quick look at the damage graphs. And Tristana at 40,000 damage in a 29-minute game. That's unheard of. Big props to Earthrider Evan. And then, of course, you really can't forget Thousand Petals. It's the unspoken hero in the support role. And when you're playing Lulu, you're all about enabling your AD carry. And, well, it was done phenomenally this game. Yeah, no, for sure. I think definitely, um, just throughout the whole entire game, you know, she was doing a really great job of just empowering her fire Evan. You know, anytime they really tried to get him, obviously Drew would kept slithering around and uh, trying to find, you know, something there. But, you know, definitely was on, was right next to AC's back the whole entire time and really avoided any kind of catastrophic throw. Yeah, of course. Well, we want to thank you guys for watching this evening. And if you don't already, be sure to follow us on all of our social medias. It's GG Leagues just about everywhere. Uh, yeah, yeah, definitely. And in addition, uh, you know, the in-person playoffs for both, um, you know, for all of our summer divisions is coming up in August 10th. So if you haven't already, head over to our um 
and to our Discord and our socials to find the RSVP links for there. Division A, which is this one, and Division A and B will be hosting their playoffs at Robert Morris University, while Division C will be hosting theirs at Grandview University in um, – over there so if you haven't already signed up for those it'll be really great good time meet the people you've been playing against all along and cheer on your favorite team yeah of course well that is going to be it for us today thank you guys for tuning in and be sure to tune in next time of course we are live every wednesday and thursday 9 p.m central time 10 p.m est and we'll see you next time catch you next week